Hi there. My name is Jonathan. I work in the Internet Sales Department here at OPT. What I'm going to talk to you about today is how to make your images the best that they possibly can be. And one of the best ways to do that is by taking flats. The way that you take flats is actually pretty simple and pretty straightforward. And what it can do for you is that it can actually take those dark edges that you normally get with fast optic systems and clean it right out. So this is how we do it. To take our flats, we're going to need a few things. One, we're going to need our scope that we normally use. Any kind of reduction that we have, it's going to be set up in its normal imaging train like we would normally take photos with. We're going to have our camera. If you have a monochrome camera, we need to make sure that all the filter wheels that you're going to be using are in here because each wavelength is going to work a little bit differently. And on top of that, if there's dust on each filter, the flats are going to take that out too. The last thing we're going to need, we're going to need a flat panel so that we can get a nice even illumination across the field of our image. First thing we need to do is just turn this on. Next, we're going to stick our scope in an upright position and have our camera facing downward. We're going to take this and put it on top of the telescope. Now it's going to fully illuminate across the sensor very, very evenly. Then what we're going to do is we're going to jump into our image capture software and we're going to take a few exposures. Let me show you how. OK, so the first thing we need to do is launch the capture program that we're going to use to capture the images of our flat frames. Today we're going to be using Nebulosity 4. I find it actually a pretty easy program to use for camera capture. There's three windows that are going to be very important, pixel stats, the capture control and the extra camera control panels. We're going to need the extra camera control for selecting filters and setting the cooling point and we're going to need the pixel statistics to get the mean or average value of our exposures and also here we're going to need this to set our exposure time the number of exposures that we'll take in our series and then set where we're going to be saving these. So if you can't find these panes here when you start up just go to the view tab and you can actually see here pixel stats, capture control, extra camera control are listed right here. And if they have this little check mark next to it, it should be displayed. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna need to do is connect the camera actually. So I'm gonna go here, find the SBIG camera and connect it. I'm gonna set the cooling as low as it can go. I know this camera is gonna be around mm, four degrees Celsius, three degrees Celsius. So what we're going to do is we're going to let that go while we do our test exposures of where we should be. Now, I'm going to take a quick exposure here at 10 seconds. I'm going to hit preview. And what preview does is pretty much what it says. It captures an image, but it doesn't save it to your hard drive. So you can get an idea of what the exposure is going to look like. Okay, so here is our first test shot, and this is actually a really good exposure duration at 10 seconds. We can see here our histogram is close to like a third of its normal space, and the mean value is around 21385. The target number you want this mean value to be, and what it mean by the mean is the average of every single little pixel here in terms of its value, that average value, we want that to be around 1950 to 2200. And since we're in that range, this is really, really good. Since we have a good exposure here at this value, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to set the number of exposures that we're going to take in our series. The more images you shoot, the less noise you're going to get when you eventually stack these all together. However, there's a point of diminishing returns. For me, a good number is about 16, but since I like prime numbers, I'm going to shoot 17 images today. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the directory here. What this is going to do is going to allow me to save the images where I want. And on the desktop, I have created a folder called Flat Frames. Here, I named it under the SBIG camera. I put the reverse date here for this next subfolder. That always helps me find 
the date that I actually shot these images. And then here I have it broken down into which particular folder that I have. If you take a look down here, filter one, what I have selected, for me that is the luminance filter. So I'm going to select this folder and I'm going to rename these series. The thing that I like to do when naming my images is to have a consistent naming convention. So I'm going to start off with a reverse date. So enter in the year, which is going to be 2016. I'm going to enter in the day, which is the first, and the month is November, so 11. Next, I'm going to enter what kind of calibration frame this is. So it's going to be a flat. Then I'm going to put the camera, STT 8300. And then lastly, I'm going to put which filter it is. This is going to be my luminance filter. Now, all I have to do is hit the Capture Series button. It's going to save it where I need it to be. It's going to be the correct exposure at the correct value. And then lastly, when I need to go to my next filters, all I need to do is select the next filter down here and repeat the naming and the directory conventions. Once I have that, I'll have all the images that I need to calibrate for each of my filters and each of my subs, and I will be able to get that perfect even illumination across my sensor. So there you have it. We just shot a series of flats. We're going to use these flats in our next upcoming images. My name is Jonathan. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call here at the store, or you can reach me at internetsales at optcorp.com.